The only sure thing, Harry, within a week left in the regular season is the old Baltimore Ravens and the official MVP of the Pick 6 podcast, as decreed by me, Lamar Jackson. All right, Brenton, a couple of questions here. Uh, one, is Lamar your MVP? Two, are the Ravens the best team in the NFL? And three, what has impressed you most about a team that not just beat the absolute dog dookie of the 49ers, but did it to the Dolphins in back-to-back weeks? Uh, yes and yes. Oh, good. Um, on MVP. I had him as my number one MVP before they beat the 49ers. So easy to just ride the wave, leave Lamar at number one. And I wrote for CBSSports.com after the Ravens game. And really, it was it was almost done before the end of the Ravens game. Like uh, Tyler Huntley was in there chucking passes to Charlie Kohler for touchdowns to make it 56 to 19, the final score. Uh, by the way, shout out to uh, a friend of the podcast, our good friend in real life, Adam Beasley, a.k.a. Wildcard, who got absolutely dragged by old takes exposed for noting that there was zero chance in hell that the Dolphins would get 42 points scored on them by the Ravens. Um, the Baltimore Ravens are the best team in football. They've answered every every question. Every time they've been asked a question by the schedule makers, they have answered it. They have done it in emphatic fashion at home and on the road. I think when you look at their, you know, they're actually better on the on the road. They're seven and one on the road this year, and five and three at home. Their home losses are to the Colts, to the Browns, and or excuse me, five and two at home, seven and one on the road. Um, so just Colts and the Browns. They have now tied the record of the 1958-1961 Colts for most consecutive wins by 14-plus points versus teams who came into that game three games above 500. And I think we've talked about this Ravens team a lot. They did have not asked Lamar Jackson to use his legs to win a game at all, really, this season. Maybe a little bit against the Rams. He He's rushed well, but he hasn't had to rush. He's been a great pocket passer. Todd Munkin deserves an insane amount of credit. And John Harbaugh deserves us an insane amount of credit for bringing in this new bring, Harbaugh gets credit for bringing in Munkin and Munkin deserves credit for getting this, the best out of Lamar Jackson an absolute MVP season. I don't think there's a case to be made for anybody else, regardless of what happens in week 18. Lamar has been incredible from the pocket. He lost Mark Andrews. He's still performing. And here's a hot take for you. Lamar Jackson, with his performance against the Dolphins on Sunday, also cemented his Hall of Fame resume. All right. I'm not going to fall for that. Uh, that's clickbait there. As, as there's, they do there's, the video there. there's never been. That's fine. Let's hear what Breach has to say. There's never been a two times. We can got- you name one Hall of Fame quarterback who's never been to a conference title game? <laughs> can you name Can you name a quarterback <laughs> okay, who's won? The answer is zero. Name, the answer is zero. Name, 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 name a player in NFL history who's won two MVPs who has not gotten into the Hall of Fame or will not get into the Hall of Fame eventually once they're eligible. Brenton, the answer is zero to my question, which you didn't answer. Uh, look, yeah. <laughs> Lamar is awesome. We talked about after the 49ers game that he is the best quarterback, that he felt like the top MVP candidate, and this just cemented that. There is no taking him down after a five-touchdown game, which, by the way, I love the fact that uh, John Harbaugh decided to have his quarterback throw a touchdown pass with under three minutes left when you're already up 49-19. to Uh, That is just – that's taking the dagger, twisting it, pulling it back out, putting it back in, twisting it four more times. I mean, it was just overkill – but look, the, the Ravens are the most dangerous team in the playoffs. Lamar Jackson's playing like this. Their offense is unstoppable as long as he is throwing the ball like this. Uh, I'm not sure how you beat them. And look, the Dolphins didn't have Jalen Waddell. They didn't have Ryan Mostert. Not at full strength. But look, 56 to 19 is 56 to 19. So I'm not sure what you can say about the Ravens other than that they are clearly the best team in the NFL heading into the postseason. I think it is interesting, Wilson, that and you look, you guys are uh, AFC North of Fibes or Files or whatever it would be. You're a Steelers fan. He's a Bengals fan. Uh, like, I still feel the Ravens are, I mean, I know they just smoked the 49ers. They just torched the Dolphins. They have obliterated the Lions in Baltimore. They destroyed the Seahawks in Baltimore. Yeah, again, their losses are they have like two where they gave a bunch of points late. They've 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 been leading by ninety 
percent of the time that they played football this year and yet somehow i feel like they're a little underrated because people just don't want to like them does that seem uh, fair? that's not anybody on this podcast i think no, I don't we're underrated by this podcast i mean just in general no, no, i can't, like, can't like, control that we, oh, we can we can talk about why we think they're good Super Bowl. no i well maybe but again i mean we could find people at every pocket every, every pocket of the internet I mean, there are people in the, on the internet that probably think Jake Browning should be starting over Joe Burrow when both are healthy. But I, I think oh, including, <laughs> reach as, he make, as he raises an eyebrow. But I, I mean, we have talked up Lamar for much of this season, at least the last month or so, given the way they're playing. And there's no amount of revisionist history that's going to change basically what you just talked about. Uh, the okay. 49ers got curb stomped. Uh, the, the Dolphins got curb stomped. And certainly a million more questions about the Dolphins and 49ers right now than what we have about Baltimore. And Breach mentioned the injuries that Bradley Chubb went down with, who I think is an ACL. Uh, we saw Xavier Howard leave on a, on a cart early in that game. But as I was watching that game on um, Red Zone, a couple of things that come back to me. Um, Justice Hill went absolutely off today. They lost J.K. Dobbins in week one. They lost Keaton Mitchell a few weeks ago, both out for the season. Uh, they've had the, the offensive line be banged up. Uh, they've gone through players on both sides of the ball. Kyle Hamilton's been banged up, and they keep on chugging. And I think that's a testament to not only what um, John Harbaugh and that coaching staff has done, the coordinators on both sides of the ball, but also uh, the front office in terms of putting that team together. So yeah. you're not going to find anyone on this podcast. Producer Harry might be a little salty given how his team was treated today in Baltimore, but I think we all agree that this is the best team in the NFL. Well, yeah, I just, I just think that there is – for whatever reason, this sort of prevent and and look, I I think it's important because if you think about the two Ravens teams prior to the, that won the Super Bowl prior to this Ravens team, you have the Trent Dilfer team with an I mean all time defense and plenty of characters on that defense, but they weren't very likable or enjoyable because they were doing it with defense and Trent Dilfer and Jamal Lewis, and then you had the Joe Flacco team which had Ray Rice. And Flacco, who was middling and average, and no one wanted to have the like the Flacco conversation was annoying. And they had Ray Lewis, who may or may not have you know, sprayed his body with deer antler steroids before the Super Bowl. Who is to say? They had a lot of good players, but it, like at no point, and, and this team has Lamar, and he's a superstar. But they have like a lot of re- just under the radar stars. Who like Zay Flowers is awesome. Isaiah Likely is playing awesome. Kyle Hamilton has done incredible work and really taken a big a bigger step in the second year. Roquan Smith is a star, but he's not like a national superstar. So I, well, the I, I, I'm not saying they don't that, have. They're not typically teams. Uh, they're not a national team. Would you that's agree with that? Reach? That's that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I mean, and that might be the Britson's point that it does feel like they flew under the radar for most of the season even though they've been very good all season. It's not like they beat the 49ers and Dolphins and we're sitting here saying, hey, this is now the best team in the NFL. They've been good all year. As we mentioned last week, the only team along with the 2007 Patriots and 1972 Dolphins to hold the lead at the two-minute warning of every game, uh, that's an insane number. That means, yeah. <laughs> like, that's that's bonkers. As you're in a conversation that only two other, the only two undefeated regular season teams in NFL history have pulled off. So to that end, yeah, I, I do agree with Prince that maybe they were underrated a little bit, but they certainly are not anymore now that these two games, the 49ers and Dolphins games, have been played. I, and I want to make one more point about Lamar Jackson before we before we move on. I wrote about this in March, like March 15th. I think I just did a little hmm, – very nice. Tremendous article, by the way. Um, I read about it. Any team in the NFL that had a quarterback problem – or even not a quarterback problem, could have made an offer via an offer sheet to Lamar Jackson when the Ravens placed the non-exclusive franchise tag on him. Lamar tweeted out while John Harbaugh was eating eggs at the coach's breakfast at the owner's meetings that he wanted a trade out of Baltimore. Not one single NFL team made an offer to Lamar Jackson. The Panthers made it known quickly they did not want to pursue Lamar Jackson, and then promptly traded a bunch of first-round picks to move up and get Bryce Young. The commanders made it known they did not want to pursue Lamar Jackson and then promptly ran Sam Howell out there, and the coach is going to get fired. But Obviously, the Panthers coach already fired. The Falcons made it known that they did not want to pursue Lamar Jackson. I firmly still believe that the reason these teams didn't want to do it is because owners – 
around the NFL, didn't like the idea of Deshaun Watson in a fully guaranteed contract, did not want to see that become a thing that happened twice because then it beco- could become norm, the norm, with Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert on deck and all these other extensions coming out, and that all these owners got together and said, let's not offer anything for Lamar because in a league where quarterbacks are everything and these guys don't care about whose toes they step on to win football games. No one wanted the current MVP, a two-time MVP, and it's outrageous. Uh, Yeah, I I think that was a recurring storyline last week when Lamar started doing his MVP um, MVP dance, if you want to call it that. I'll I'll mention this quickly before we move on because the old Dolphins got a 56-burger dropped on them. And um, I reached out to our guy, Justin Page, who's the – head of uh, stats for CBS and he's freaking awesome. And I said, is there an easy way to find out how many 11 win teams got their doors blown off late in the season and um, what that meant? So here are the teams that had at least 11 wins late in the season and got absolutely obliterated and in, in what happened to their futures. So the 1990, the 1991 bears lost to the 49ers in week 17. They were not sitting their starters. Jim Harbaugh started that game. They lost 52 to 14. The 1997 49ers got destroyed by the Chiefs in week 11. They lost 44 to 9. Nice uh, Broncos lost to the Packers 41 to 6. Uh, breached the 88 Oilers. Jim Breach was on the team. Uh, beat the Ouch. Bengals, excuse me. The Bengals were 11 and 3 coming into that game, 41 to 6. And here's what happened to those teams 91 Bears lost in their wild card matchup. The 97 49ers did win a division game, uh, but lost in the conference championship. The 96 Broncos lost uh, their first round game. And Breach, you know what happened to the 88 Bengals? They made it to the Super Bowl. That's, that's what you right. want to be, Dolphins. That's what you want to be. That's right, Harry. So there's there's hope. There's hope. 